I believe it's like May 2nd, 2021. I'm in Oglala and Grant, Nebraska. There's two combining towns that are like next to each other, kind of 10 miles away from each other or something. This is uh, Sunseeker Class C. I forget the year. It's on a Ford, I think, E350 chassis, if I remember right. Much better, much, much more luxurious than uh, in terms of driving this than driving that set van was. By far, I almost fall asleep at the reel. I'm in uh, Nebraska, like I said, so I'm about halfway. I'm going to Bend, Oregon. So I have about 1,200 more miles that just drove. Probably all combined is like 1,000 in the last couple days. So I think it was like 2,100 or 2,200 miles from Goshen to Bend. So... I did want to point out the only thing that I do like about this RV is even with the slide in you still have plenty of space to go through there. They didn't make it really annoying and stupid and put the whole thing clear to the, to the door so you can't use it. You know that's the only thing that I do like about this RV setup. I don't think you know if I had the money I don't think I'd buy it. It's just got this the cheap lightweight walls your classic RVs have. Paper thin trying to save on weight. I just don't like them. The, this version of them. The Fleetwoods, the Sunseekers, the River Fleet, or whatever they look like, all those cheap brands, JC, all that. Just not my thing. If I had the money, I just I wouldn't bother spending it on this. I forget what I think it's like seventy thousand or something like that. Lorian, not Lorian, but under a hundred thousand anyway. I think technically we can get away with sleeping up there if obviously we take the time and to make sure it doesn't look like we actually were in there. Beforehand, you're supposed to limit the use of everything. Try to only you really use the driver's seat, obviously, because I'm in transport. But this one's a cold load. It's going to a dealer. And, uh, it was sitting in a yard for six weeks or something, and every week they have to move it back another row so that you start them and use them for a minute. So it was in row six, so that's how I know it was it back six weeks. It's a cold load because I have Pinnacle orientation virtual orientation tuesday and i needed somewhere to do it and this would actually be the perfect spot to do it just gonna sit there on the table with my phone and uh go to that pinnacle meeting thingy and hope my phone gets through i don't know maybe park by a hotel and try to use the hotel's wi-fi or something i don't know see what happens hopefully they don't use all my data up but uh, hopefully that won't be too long to listen to all their safety lectures and crap i did all their videos already and then I got to schedule a driving test with them for that next following Friday or Monday when I get back that way. Their yard is in Bristol, which is another town next to Elkhart and Goshen and Topeka and Wakasuka, all those little towns right there that have the RV plants. Um, going to Bend, Oregon is going to be an interesting coming back out of there because the best I could see on looking up research wise is 18 miles to or from Bend Oregon to Medford or not Medford Red, Redmond Bend Field Airport which is like an airport between the two towns 18 miles away I, I would guess the local taxi or else Lyft or Uber is going to be 40 bucks most likely it'll be a local taxi hopefully I can get out of there with that then go to the airport and the airport's flight back from a third party for Delta it was 219 the other day when I looked at it, but the same day or the next day or the day after that, it's going to end up being, might be slightly more or less or whatever, I don't know. But I have not bought it yet because I'm, I'm getting by, I should say, but it, at the moment, after I save up money after this load, I'll be ahead, but at the moment, this, you know, with as much feel as these things take, I don't want to spend any more of the advanced on something like an airline ticket and then not have enough money for the fuel to get it where it needs to go or something so I'm waiting on the that end of it and the other problem about it is the dispatch my dispatcher told me to call them when I get there because you know Synergy also has an or Oregon yard that she would have to contact or something to see what they have that day if I want to try and drive something back there's a small possibility that something will be going back toward the factory and it's probably a reject of some kind or another. I would guess that the manufacturer has to fix or maybe just a different kind of RV that they make out in Oregon that they send the other way. I don't know. But 
I do like the wood in here, I guess. It's it's not the fake kind of wood, at least. And a decent sized fridge and stuff. I just don't think I'd ever, in, it, in the world, buy this myself. Just two fake walls and stuff. The one thing I would say about the shower is if I did buy it, I would take out that, just the regular skylight that's there. And I'd make that so it opens, so that when it rains, you can get a rain shower from outdoors. Right into your shower. I don't know why they don't build them that way. They should. And then you just lift the skylight up when it rains and get rained on. Standing in your shower. I don't know why that would be a big deal. It wouldn't be enough water to fill your gray tank. You can tell a difference when you fill the fuel tank in here to when it's almost empty. You know, I ran them down to a quarter. I try not to run them below a quarter. But even still, I was down to a quarter and then I filled up and went to full. And I could tell the difference on the gas pedal as you're driving this. It's twice the size of the van, twice the height. And so it's it's a wind cloud, basically a sail, just like the van was. But at least with the step van, you know, every bump you went over, it had really those loose steering column and stuff like that, and you had to readjust, and the play in the steering wheel was just all over. At least in this, you don't have that problem. It's just the wind. So occasionally when the wind comes up, I have to slow down, but at least I'm not fighting both the road and the wind. A lot better, more like more luxurious drive, I guess. And mostly I needed that spot and to go to the meeting. That worked kind of worked perfect for that because I can take notes for whatever I need on the table. Get my paper, my notebook out and do notes of whatever he says that's important enough to care about. For Pinnacle, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much the gist of the update is just this. And I will post a regular picture of this as a thumbnail for the external side because I was going to go outside and show you the outdoor side, but it decided to drizzle and rain and look like crap. That's why I stopped because it just looks on the weather map like it's getting ten times worse going to uh, Wyoming. And I have to stop at the port of entry in Wyoming anyway, so I just waited till the morning. But I have 600 miles tomorrow to do, roughly, and then uh, Tuesday morning I'll be doing Pinnacle here in orientation thing in, in the RV. And then, uh, what was the other, then uh, Tuesday night or all day Wednesday, somewhere there, I'm going to make that other 600 miles up, so 300 miles a day or whatever. To get that 1,200 miles all in, and then I'll get there on Thursday, they only accept deliveries, that this dealership only accepts deliveries between 8 and noon. In the mornings, and so there's no way I'd make it there by Wednesday in the morning. So I'm just going to shoot for Thursday, and when I was talking to her on the phone, she said that actually works out better for them. Because the person that they have checked their RVs is there on Thursdays. And not on Wednesdays, I guess, so. Guess everything worked out for the good. Um, I do like how it's got an oven, I guess. Oven, microwave combo. But, you know, this is more of your people that already have a house and then they just want to go play around on the weekend and still live in a house kind of thing i don't think i'd want to drag all this around with me everywhere i go if i won the lottery i think I, I would be much better off buying a hellcat charger and putting a custom bid in it and just using the truck stops you know on my way by or just living in hotels in between driving the car i think it would be the much better life to be if, if i won the lottery and could afford it you know, I won the lottery or something, and I wouldn't go spending 70 grand on something like this. I just don't see the, it holding up over the long term. There's little things. That screen right there popped out on me on the way here just the other day, and I don't even know how that happened. The wind must have gone up underneath there or something. I don't know. <laughs> and there's stains up there. Can't really see it, though, but there's stains on that thing up there. Hints at either shoddy factory work or this has been used before or something and then it's Apparently Ford never updated their chassis since like 95. I know it's newer, but it Definitely don't look like it from the outside and then as I was driving it looked like a sandblasted windshield So I don't know if the factory messed up and broke the original windshield and put a different one in there from a junkyard or something I don't know but when I was driving close to dark the other day into the Sun it was all sandblasted and this thing had 15 miles when I came out of Goshen, supposedly, according to the odometer. And now it's got 900 miles, something like that, 900,000 miles on it. And I know for a fact that I you know, wasn't behind cars enough to get that sandblasted. That was sandblasted like a 95 chassis would be sandblasted or something, you know, the windshield. 
So it's kind of iffy on the windshield too. It makes me wonder what they did. If they just combined a bunch of other RVs into this or what. But in my opinion, myself, I wouldn't buy it. But it's just because it's not my taste. It might be something for somebody else. I don't need all the room and everything else. I don't. If I did have it, I don't think I'd ever have to slide out because you just don't need to. There's more than plenty. That's the one thing I do like about it. There's more than plenty of room to walk between there, even with two people walking by each other. But this thing is wide. I about almost took out the fuel pump. I caught it before anything bad happened, but I, I came close because I forgot how wide it is from. Because it looks smaller as you're driving here in the cab, but then it sticks out a foot and a half or something on each side. Takes up almost the whole lane, driving lane, and I just, if I was going to live in it all the time, I mean, if I stayed in one spot, which I don't like doing, but if I, you know, for some reason had to stay in one spot the majority of the year, then yeah, this ain't bad. You could, this is one of those plug it in and leave it kind of things, in my opinion. It's not one of those deals, not something I'd want to drive and move every day, in my opinion, but not a bad ride. It's just not my type the one thing about it, Synergy said there's, you know, all those other same things, same Sunseeker deals in those two rows there, six and seven or something, all have to go to Oregon. It's almost the same place I'm going now, so if I want to, I can be have pretty constant work. But the thing, the reason why I would have constant work is because the fuel, it takes somewhere between seven and eight hundred bucks for the fuel. You know, this is just about as bad as the step van. The step van is probably a little worse. This gets a little ga better gas mileage, but I, I would guess I finish up at somewhere between 700 and 800 worth of fuel. It caught it. The trip, I should go over my numbers with you all. The, the trip itself paid 884 out the out the gate because 84 was a bonus and 884 on delivery because another 84 was a bonus supposedly. But when you do the math in terms of fuel and everything, then no, I wasn't going to get there with 800. And still be able to eat food and stuff. <laughs> yeah, because this thing just, you know, unless I unless I magically don't get any wind or anything, I'm tempted to, to drive it at night because there's not as much wind at night. And sleep during the day because then you don't need a blanket during the day. You know, that would make sense all the way around for me. But I don't know if I want to be up overnight. I, I, I did buy a cheap blanket from Walmart over there because I had a sleeping bag the last trip and I ended up throwing it out because I had to fly back on Frontier. And Frontier only lets you have the one bag. Well, I had to pay for that one bag, but you have to pay for every bag. And I didn't want to pay for another sleeping bag. Not the rates that they charge. Frontier is like the Greyhound of the air, pretty much. And their clientele is, too. I, I kind of try to avoid it. You know, if you had to pay 222 bucks to get on to United, but you only had to pay 170 to go to Frontier, by the time you end up paying Frontier's bags and everything, you're up to the 222 bucks worth and you should have just gone United because they have the free bags and much better clientele and you end up paying the same was my thought that or night but so I'm gonna try to get United or Delta or one of the bigger airlines whenever I can but anyway the numbers on this was 884 out 884 on the arrival seven or eight hundred bucks gonna go to fuel I figure 40 for the cab to get to the airport from where I deliver this and then 219 is what I saw the other day, but it could range anywhere between that and 270 to get home on the airport. And then another 40 bucks to take the Greyhound and 5 bucks to take the Blue Line from the airport to the Greyhound. And then I figure in about 100 bucks to stay at a Holiday Inn that's between the airport and the Greyhound because I've, in these last two trips, it's a little too much to fly all day and then sit on the ground four hours in the morning. On one shot, so I think I'm gonna break that up by a day and just go sit in the hotel for a day in between time and then take the little four hour trip out to ground. I think otherwise, you can fly into South Bend, and South Bend costs about 50 or 60 bucks more than Chicago. But then by the time you fly into Chicago and then take the ground, it's 40 bucks more for the ground. You end up paying almost the same. South Bend's only about 20 bucks more to fly into South Bend. The only issue there is then you got to take South Bend City buses or else pay for a 30 or $40 cab to get back to Goshen, which ends up costing way more. But I can go to Elkhart. Elkhart has a yard that these ones sit in. That's where I picked this one up at. So, you know, if nothing else, you get back to Elkhart. Or if you have to fly into Elkhart or, or South Bend, you can go to Elkhart, which is right across the interstate pretty much. And then call them and take something out of the Elkhart yard and you don't have to go all the way back to Goshen. 
The other funny thing I found is I, I tried to do the bus to go all the way back on all ground to see how much that would cost, even though I don't want to do that. It would take like two or three days, and it's going to cost like 200 bucks. It's about the same as flying, so the bus is pretty much out of it, but unless I can't get anything else cheaper than that on the airline, or as much on the airline, if all the airlines go up to 300 bucks a day, I'll end up taking the bus to save 100 bucks. Probably, I don't know. But if when I was looking at that, if you go to Goshen, apparently... For some reason, the bus goes to Denver and then goes down to Texas and then goes back up to Goshen, which is stupid in my opinion. But then if you look up the bus for w Wakasuka, which is pretty much right next door, 10 miles away from Goshen, it goes directly over to through Nebraska and Iowa, the route that I came over here driving, which would be the route I'd want to go home as long as it's a straight line back instead of going all the way to Texas. But you go 10 miles further and go to Goshen and then you have to go all the way to Texas. To take their bus. It's just the stupidest thing, man. You can't just put a ticket that goes to Goshen. And the best part is, you pay 12 bucks more, you can go from Wakasuka to Goshen. On the same bus, it goes back up around. I don't know why Greyhound or the whatever third party bus that runs with it in that area doesn't just have that set up on Greyhound that way to go all the way to Goshen, but it don't. But anyway, if nothing else, you can go to Wakasuka. So I'm figuring, figuring stuff out about the industry. I guess. I did see a smaller fire truck the other day that had transport plates on it, and I'm hoping that was from Pinnacle. Just to have a different experience driving a fire truck. Or something, utility line trucks and stuff like that. That's the whole reason I started doing this, was to be able to drive different stuff. And have that experience, you know, that life itself. <sighs> I don't mind these RVs. I'll take more of these RVs. I'm just saying, you know, change it up a little every now and then. This is pretty damn luxurious, though, compared to that step van. That step van was, whew, that was a hard four days. This this one just seems cushy as hell compared to that. Like and subscribe, leave comments. We'll catch you on next time's flip.